From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Tom Bates. Oh, how are you? Dr. Praley just called me, Mr. Dollar. He says you've been threatening him. Oh, I wouldn't call it a threat, Mr. Bates. I simply told him that if he won't let me question Miss Parker, then I'll have to get a court order to do it anyway. Well, as acting county attorney here, I think I could block that order, Mr. Dollar. Maybe, but I doubt if it would be a very smart move. Now, you look here. She's in no shape to answer questions. She's under doctor's care. It's been five days now since the shooting. She's still very upset, nervous. She might say things that could be misconstrued, that she didn't mean. Oh, what things? How would I know? I just thought you might. Since you've already questioned her once, right after she killed her father, wasn't she upset then? Did she say anything you misconstrued? I'm warning you, Dollar. And I'm warning you. I'm going to talk to that girl one way or another. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Green Pass, Virginia, to the Home Office, Surety Mutual Insurance Limited, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the qui bono matter. Qui bono, Latin for who benefits. Item eight, one dollar. Transportation out to Sammy Drake's Happy Hollow Roadhouse on the highway north of town. On the way there, I thought over what I'd learned so far, and I realized it wasn't much. On the face of it, the thing was simple enough, no mystery at all. Five nights ago, Dan Parker, the local county attorney, had returned from a business trip and entered his sleeping house. His adopted daughter, Luann, mistaking him for a prowler, had shot him to death in the darkness. There it was, an accident, pure and simple. The coroner said so, the sheriff agreed, and the whole town was determined to keep it that way. But I still couldn't buy it quite that easily. Not when there was a $100,000 life insurance policy payable to Luann Parker the girl who'd pull the trigger. Maybe I'd find some answers at the roadhouse. (laughs) The Happy Hollow was like a thousand other places of its kind. A neon-lighted barn set 50 yards off the road. Inside, a jukebox, a raucous bar, and a scattering of tables around a splintery dance floor. Saturday night's a four-piece band. Probably a game or two going on in the back room and whatever else the local sports might demand. It was early yet, and the joint hadn't started to jump. What's the word, Mac? Save your money and buy booze. Yeah, man. Out of town, huh? Depends on which town. Any town but this one, man. Here it's for the birds. Oh, I don't know. Looks to me like you got a good setup here. I'm eating. But it ain't easy, man. It's rough. Oh, it'll be rougher, Sammy, with a new county attorney. What's the pitch, Mitch? That's your name, isn't it? Sammy Drake? That's a crime, maybe? Oh, it might be. I don't know yet. You were the feds? No. Syndicate man? No, I'm an insurance investigator. Insurance? You mean protection? <laughs> Not the kind you're talking about, Sammy. I'm here in connection with Dan Parker's death. You mean you're legit? That's right. Well, tie me up and mail me off. I thought you were somebody putting a bite on me. I am. Yeah? Yeah. I got some questions, Sammy, and I want some answers. About that Parker rubber? Right. Well, you're out of luck, Chuck. I don't know nothing from nothing about nothing. See what I mean? I got reason to think different. How so? Somebody been passing the word? Maybe. Two get you five, it was that Bates character. Am I in? I couldn't say. Sure it was. The new county attorney. He's got a big deal now. And he'd give his left eyeball to put the finger on me. Why so? Why has he got it in for you, Sammy? Because he thinks his doll has been... You mean the Parker girl? I forget. You want to do it the hard way, Sammy? No speaking English. I can get Tom Bates to wish you a warrant, you know. He'd love to have that chance. So you can either talk to me here and now, or you can talk to him and the sheriff in the basement of the courthouse. Rough and tough, huh? If that's what it takes, yes. Come on back to the office. All right. What'd you say your name was, Buzz? I didn't. It's Dollar, Johnny Dollar. Dollar, huh? Yeah, it rhymes with collar. 
I always like to be wise to who's putting the slug on me. Come on in. Thanks. How about a drink? No, uh, not now, thanks. Well, I guess I'll have a short one for my health. You hungry? Like a steak? Later, maybe. They're the most. This is a crummy joint, strictly for the sticks, but the food's good. Well, here's a go. Yeah. Maybe you think I'm trying to stall. <laughs> I know you are, Sammy. No, no, not really. Not now, anyway. Because when I stop and think about it, I can't see where I got anything to worry about. You see what I mean? You haven't, unless you had something to do with Dan Parker's death. Now, now, let's relax, Max. The, word, the way I get the word, nobody had anything to do with it except that doll. Could be. Could be nothing. Did she blast him or didn't she? Apparently she did. <laughs> Thought he was a burglar. <laughs> That's a rich one. And she's halfway right at that. Meaning? Look, Dollar, I'm on a level with you. If you got any idea that I wanted Dan Parker knocked off, you're way out there. You want to know why? I can probably, yes. I'll tell you why. He was my fix in this town. Three years I've had this place open, and I've never been touched. So why would I want to put myself out of business? Oh. How much was the payoff? Grand and a half a month. Maybe you figured you could make a better deal with somebody else. Yeah? Who? Not with that stuffed shirt Bates. He's just been itching to get at me. But Parker kept a lid on him. How about the sheriff? Who knows? I'm going to give him a pitch, of course. It's my only chance now to stay in business. But I don't know if he'll play. See what I mean? <laughs> All right, Sammy. Let's go back to the question I asked you outside there. Why does Bates have it in for you? Because he's got the drooling goose for that Parker kid. And he didn't like it much when she kept hanging around me. How'd you feel about it? You want the truth? I didn't like it much either. Why not? She was too wired up and spoiled. Used to get in her own way. Oh, this town's treated her like a queen or something. She figured she could do as she pleased. Well, that don't go in a joint like this. What do you mean? Well, these lads come in here, get a few shots under their belt. Dame like that starts to mean trouble. I didn't want her hanging around. I had a good thing going here, and I wasn't about to get it a last step. But it was no use. I couldn't keep her out. What did her father think about it? He didn't like the idea, but he couldn't do much about it. She got her own way with him, the same as with everybody else. Except when she wanted to go to New York. Well, nobody can win them all. I understand you put that idea in her head, Sammy. Then you better take a different understand. Yeah? Yeah. She was bugged up on that idea before I ever met her. That's why she started coming in here. She wanted me to put her hep on how it was in the big, wild city. She wanted to know how to get in. What was the names of all the spots, including the rough ones? How the rackets worked. <laughs> how would I know how the rackets worked? <laughs> I didn't say a word, Sammy. You know something? In some ways, that kid's as smart as a mink. But underneath, she's a regular hick, just like the rest of them around here. She thinks that stuff is glamour, the big time, hot stuff. And she was busting her braces to get at it. Even this place, this, this crummy clip joint, to her it was wicked and exciting. Oh, man, how square can you get? I suppose you're trying to talk her out of going to New York. Do I look crazy or something? I was all for it, anywhere. As long as it got her off my neck. Beautiful girl like Luann Parker on your neck and you were trying to shake her off? Oh, Sammy, I'm losing you. Oh, look, Dollar, when it comes to dames, I've got as fast an eye as the next guy. But with that chick, oh, man, I unpack my toothbrush and I stay home. Why? Why? She's got this whole town fooled, everybody but me. A sweet little thing in ruffled rompers, bucking for a halo. Well, I got news for you, brother, she ain't. And you're the only one who really knows her. Is that what you're claiming, Sammy? Sure. It's a big laugh. But that kid's smart. And inside, she's colder than a fish. I'm a fairly tough baby, Dollar, but I'll tell you something straight. I'm scared of that girl. Expense account item nine, $6.90. Steak and incidentals at the Happy Hollow Roadhouse. And Sammy Drake was right. The steak was good. Item 10, $1.75. Transportation out to the Green Pass Railroad Depot, three miles east of town. I tried to see that night station agent earlier in the day, but he was sleeping then. But it was nearly midnight now, and I figured he'd be on duty. He was. Good evening, sir. I... Uh... Hold it, son. Got a message come in here. Yes, sir. Old number eight's gonna be right on time. I'm glad to hear it. I <laughs> want to... Hold it, uh... son. Got to answer it, you know. Mighty important business getting these here trains through. Yes, I imagine it is. I... Yeah, hold it! Yes, sir, right on time. Be here in about two minutes now. 
Well, son, what's on your mind? I wondered if you were on duty the night Dan Parker got back in from Richmond, the night he was killed. Oh, yes, indeedy. I, uh, you must be that fella Sheriff Jim Peterson was telling me about. That fella from the insurance company. Yes, that's right. Well, then I guess it's all right to talk to you. At least, why, that's what Jim said. Nice of him. It's a mighty terrible thing. A downright tragedy for that poor motherless girl. Making a mistake like that, shooting her own father. Yeah, a rough deal. Did you notice Mr. Parker when he got off the train that night? Why, of course I did. I always notice anybody getting off. It's part of my job, son. Yeah, well, I, uh... It was right about this same time of night. He come in on number eight, at the same one it's due in now. Did you talk with him? Of course I talked with him. I know Dan Parker since we both pups. <laughs> he, said, he said, hi, Willie. I said, fine. And he said, how's the family? And I said, fine. And he said, well, you know, we, we talked. We had to talk more, too, but there, there's some fellow with him. Oh, well, I didn't I, know that. I reckon it was just some passenger he'd struck up the time of day with. Dan was all... There. You hear that, son? She's uh, coming across the Briar Creek Bridge right now, right on time. Well, uh, look, what happened to this stranger? Did he and Dan Parker leave the station together? Oh, no. No, they just talked while the engine was taken on water. The fella got back on the train before it pulled out. He's just going through. Did you hear what they were talking about? No, can't say that it did, son. Most likely didn't amount to nothing, though. No, I suppose not. By golly, I did hear one thing. Oh, it, what? Just when the train was starting up, the fella leaned out and yelled, Thanks a lot, I'll be seeing you. Dan just grinned, waved back, and went on down the platform to the telephone booth. You uh, don't know what he meant by that remark. Oh, nothing, more than likely. Just one of them things you say, you know. But that's life for you, because he won't be seeing him after all. See, she's coming around the bend there, son. I gotta get the mail sack out. You got any more questions, you, you're gonna have to ask him on a run. The mail's got to get through. Oh, I wouldn't think of stopping it. Hey, look, uh, you said Dan Parker made a call from that telephone booth over there. Do you know who he talked to? Nobody, son. What do you mean? Well, he come back and said he had a busy signal. I guess he'd have to walk home. And that's what he done. That was his mistake. That was one of them anyway. Well, you got any more questions? I reckon they'll have to wait. I haven't got any more. How's that, son? I said thanks a lot. Uh, what were? Well, there you got me. I don't know. Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a tense interview, a subtle attack by a shrewd and dangerous opponent, and complete surrender. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by Les Crutchfield. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>